check out a joint where they came up here for the skiing to brew beer and to smoke meats. And well, they've been doing it for 22 years, so I got to check it out. This is Moat Mountain Smokehouse and Brewery. Firing Thai chicken pizza. After a long day of skiing or hiking, it's just real good comfort food. Pick it up, brisket, slice it now. The smoked meats are excellent. We love coming here for the beer. <laughs> Drink up. Just can't speak highly enough about it. Everything is scratch made here? Yeah. It's our home away from home. And like everybody's crib, owners Vicki Valentino and Steven Johnson surrounded themselves with everything they love. Stephen thought that if we moved to the place where he could ski every single day and open up a brewery, that it would be great. I was a fine dining chef in Portland for a while. Then I started playing with barbecue. Hung out in Austin. And thought, that's what I need to bring back to New England. Yes. Barbecue meatloaf? Thank you. I don't order meatloaf anywhere. It is to die for here. What are we into first? Our Austin barbecue sauce. We got our base sauces. Just a generic barbecue sauce that you're going to fortify. Yes. Whole grain mustard, chipotles and adobo, brown sugar, molasses, Worcestershire, dry English mustard. Almost getting into Carolina now. Habanero peppers, sriracha, chili garlic. OK. Gallon of water. Get this with the immersion blender. Barbecue sauce is done, so let's get into meatloaf. Start with a blend of all steak, ground beef, 80-20, with a little bit of short rib in it. We have the Cajun mirepoix, red and green bell peppers, onions, and the Austin barbecue that we just made. Got it. The man from Worcestershire. And of course, you got to have sour cream. I like the tang factor. Kosher salt, minced chopped fresh garlic, dry parsley, ground black pepper, eggs. Huevos. Panko breadcrumbs. We add the rest of the beef. Mix this up. From there, we weigh five and a quarter pound balls to form the lobes. And then we glaze them with the Austin sauce. Cooks off. About 350 for about an hour and a quarter. So now we're on to our roasted garlic mashed potato seasoning. We roast garlic in olive oil, melted butter, milk, kosher salt, whole black pepper, half and half, and you and your sour cream. Bro. Immersion blender. Red bliss potatoes that have been cooked in the steam kettle. You got to break them up, slowly incorporate the potato seasoning mixture. Right. And then whip them. I dig it. Look at that. I didn't get meatloaf when I was a kid. But I'd go to my friend's house, and they'd have meatloaf. And I'd come back, and I'm like, what is this? It's a gigantic square meatball. Throw it on the griddle. Give it a sear. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Two monster pieces is one order? Well, we send people home with lunch the next day. They're really happy. Our mashed potatoes, our butternut squash, and <laughs> Chauffant green beans. Show off. Bring the whole family down. It's our Austin barbecue sauce that we made earlier. You don't just think one would have been enough? That's great meatloaf. It's so tender, moist, full of flavor. Your Austin City barbecue sauce is wham bam. Then you move over to the mashed potatoes, which have an awesome amount of sour cream in them. Roasted garlic flavor all the way through. Green beans cook perfectly. Your butternut squash cleanses the palate. Well done. Is there somewhere I can take this and just lay down for about an hour and have a nap? We have an in-room upstairs. Perfect. The barbecue meatloaf is delicious. The mashed potatoes are incredible. I love garlic, so I'm there. The barbecue sauce, they put on a lot of stuff here, rightfully so. Well, you know what people have been asking for a lot lately? Vegetarian. And if you know anything about me, about my family, about my sister Morgan, we love vegetarian food. And this is Sweet Melissa. Bar's filling up. Get ready to be slammed. It doesn't really matter if you're vegetarian or not. Everyone is just very into Sweet Melissa's. Buffalo cauliflower wings. Melissa is fabulous at changing cauliflower or mushroom or black bean into something that just is unique. And for over two decades, Melissa Murphy and her husband, Mark Zears, have turned surviving into thriving with their restaurant, bar, and food truck. We just thought, probably won't make it, but let's give it a try. You went from, <laughs> I hope we make it to 22 years? Congratulations. Are you vegetarian? Yeah. Both of you? No. No. I respect the, the diet, and I eat it at home. Right. And here. Selling two lentil loaves for table six. The lentil loaves, amazing. If you didn't know, you would have thought it was meatloaf. Doused in ketchup, just like growing up. It comes with mashed potatoes and a mushroom gravy. It's delicious. What's the first dish we're going to make? A lentil version of a meatloaf. Do you understand that I get mental for the lentil? Excellent. The first thing we're going to do is mash some potatoes. We pre-cooked some Yukon Gold, some salt and pepper, almond milk, and melted vegan butter. What's our next step? The mushroom gravy that goes on top of the mashed potatoes. Olive oil, and then onions. Cremony mushrooms, black pepper, tamari. You can have it today but it's also good tomorrow. <laughs> Water that we use when we boil the potatoes. Thickens it up. You also get the flavor. Ta-da. Cornstarch slurry. It'll tighten up. Let this cook for about 30 minutes. Next, we make the meatloaf? Yeah. OK. Olive oil, onions, potatoes, minced celery, and carrots. 
A little garlic powder, black pepper, sea salt, pressed red chilies. Soaked lentils and our veggie stock. It takes about an hour or so for it to cook. Okay. We're going to do the next step for our lentil loaf. That lentil mixture we just cooked, a little bit of Tabasco, poultry seasoning, tamari, crackers, cheddar cheese. And that is a fair amount of egg. That's how it works out for us. Okay. It's going into a loaf pan. Ta-da. Yeah. And a little spray? Yeah. Just had to freshen up. Bake at 350, about an hour, 15 minutes. We're going to slam it out of here. Okay. Slice a few slices, crisp it on both sides, steam it just a little bit. Okay. Mashed potatoes, mushroom gravy, top it with some of this tangy tomato sauce. And what's in that tomato sauce? Ketchup, brown sugar, Tabasco, and mustard. Stick this up in the salamander just to heat up that sauce. All right. This right here is like the most tender, moist meatloaf you could find. I mean, it's got great texture, it's got great chew. Love the little bit of crust that you put on it. The vegan mashed potatoes and this mushroom gravy. What I like is how creamy you're able to get them without the dairy. And the kicker to the whole thing is the ketchup, brown sugar, mustard, Tabasco sauce. Really delicious. Mashed potatoes and gravy going down for the lentil loaf. I'm a meat eater, and I don't feel like I'm missing that meat at all. On top of that, she has great mashed potatoes. It's just to die for. This is Lavelle's Bistro. What makes it so special? Just the atmosphere. Everything's from scratch. It's family owned and run. By Kathy Lavelle and Frank Eagle, who opened up shop inside a hotel in 2001. Then teamed up with chef Cleveland Kenny. 25 ingredient meatloaf. Yes, sir. First, we're going to sweat the vegetables, carrots, red peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, garlic, green onion. All right, so nine of the 25. Next step is? The wet mix, starting with cumin, cayenne, thyme, white pepper, garlic, sugar, black pepper, salt, paprika, cilantro, whole eggs, ketchup, half and half. All right. 22 ingredients so far, folks. Everybody keep it up at home? Now we're going to make our meatloaf. We're going to add Italian sausage, certified Angus beef, sweated veg. Now we're going to add our wet mix, panko. Now, are you free forming this, or are we going into pans? I'm free forming it. I got to beat this thing up. You want to get all the air pockets out of it? Cover with foil in the oven, 350, how long? 18 to 22 minutes. And then we're going to remove that aluminum foil, and then we're going to let it sit in there again for another 12 minutes or so. What do we serve with this dish? We're making a demi glace. Let's start with that. We're making a veal stock with these dinosaur bones. I in like here. it. The veal bones. Absolutely. Got it. Carrot, celery, and onion mix here. Kind of just oh, dump it on there. Here we go. I'm ready for you. In the oven. Hour 15 minutes. When you get into something like the demi glace to make it yourself, the flavor difference is just unquestionable. So go in with some water first. Peppercorns, thyme, and my bay leaves. Got it. I want to dilute this tomato paste. This is when the splash is going to start happening. And lastly, the bones boil for six hours. Final step, chef. This is reduced significantly. So now I'm going to actually add a demi glace base to it. You're going to fortify it. Fortify it, gotcha. right. So our meatloaf is done. Plate, mashed potatoes, loaves right on top, sides of vegetables. Splash the demi. And it's ready to serve. Cleveland, on Triple D, I think one of the things that people expect to see are dishes like meatloaf. For something so simple, there's a lot of ways that people could take long turns. What you have here is a very tender, well-seasoned, fortified meatloaf. I love the Italian sausage and the ground beef going together. I can see the veggies. They've been sweated down enough, but not too much that they disappear. You got a good ratio of nice crust on the outside of the meatloaf to juicy interior of the meatloaf. When you're going to say, we make 25 ingredient meatloaf, it really better be one of those dishes that people say, hey, when you go up to Fairbanks, this is a place to check out. Sweet. Well done. Thank you. So I'm here in beautiful San Diego, California, in an area known as Mission Hills. Now, I'm here to check out a diner that was once a bistro, and it's owned by a guy named Rick, but that's not the name of the diner, but it's his sister's name. But his sister's not actually an owner of the diner. I know this is really confusing, but I hear the food's great. This is Joe's Diner. Meatloaf ready to play. It's not a traditional meatloaf. The glaze on here is just excellent. That little pop of flavor wrapped in bacon. Just crazy wonderful. Joe's Meatloaf. California grass-fed ground beef. Got it. Some diced pasilla chili peppers. Pasillas aren't very spicy. Add a really nice flavor. Italian parsley and then pecorino cheese. This is a very interesting meatloaf at this stage. Panko breadcrumbs, eggs. Whole milk. A little salt and pepper. How much Worcestershire, Chef? About a tablespoon. I like the way this is going so far. Mold the meatloaf, pop it out. 
We've already got our apple with smoked bacon laid out. Pull up the ends. It's when the magic happens. Flip it over into the perforated pan. Looks like you've done that before. For the glaze, you've got ketchup, ketchup, brown sugar, dry mustard. Hot sauce. We're going to glaze it. So we cook it? It's going to be portioned. Pop it back in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now we're into? Demi-gloss. We've got beef stock, red wine, and tomato paste, thyme, peppercorns, bay leaves, red onions. Bring it to a boil, strain it, let it reduce about half. And then a little slurry to tighten it up. Good to go. The meatloaf is down. Do a quick sear on both sides. And we got our garlic Yukon mashed potatoes, French green beans, country gravy, and then our beef demi. Most diners, it's not like 80 steps to make meatloaf. <laughs> It's fantastic. That's some of the most tender, moist meatloaf I've tried. This is my first time that I've ever had pasillas in a meatloaf. Between the pecorino and the pasilla, this has a ton of personality. And it's like its own style of meatloaf. The demi's a nice little kiss, but the real star of it is that sauce that you glazed on the outside. I mean, then you go into extra innings, adding in this gravy. The mashed potatoes are great. Green beans are on point. You mask your French bistro energy into this American staple really well. Thank you. You can take a man out of the bistro, but you can't take a bistro out of the man. I got the meatloaves for you guys right there. It's extremely flavorful. The sauce that they put on top of it is just so delicious. It's got a smoky taste from the bacon. All right, so right off the I-5 here in Chehalis, Washington, it's where a single mom has got an all-female staff, and her restaurant is her way, her style, her energy, her attitude. It's kind of like right out of a storybook. This is Joy's Once Upon a Time. When we first came here, it was really hard to decide what we wanted to get because everything looked so good. Tell me your favorite thing on the menu. My favorite is the meatloaf. I mean, you can't go wrong with the pesto, and the meatloaf is delicious. It's comfort food upon comfort food. I think we're into a meatloaf sandwich next. We are. We're going to start with some nice local Italian sausage, and they season it to my liking. OK. It's all about joy. Right? It's all about joy. Grass-fed beef. I get to lick the bowl. Lots of onions. Eggs from my wonderful chickens. I use gluten-free crumbs so that everybody that comes in can eat this meatloaf. Very nice. Ketchup, Italian parsley, minced garlic. Yes. Lots of Italian seasoning. Salt and pepper. What is this? It's fennel oil. Fennel because oil. Because I really like fennel what? flavor. Right. Worcester. So these will get formed into little footballs and then roasted in the oven. 325 for 15 minutes. Yep. What are we into now? We're going to make some meat sauce. Meatloaf panini gets a meat sauce. Well, why not? We're going to start with olive oil, carrots, and onions. A little nice sweetness going into this. You don't need to use sugar. You can yeah. use carrots. Oh, That's I'm how my grandfather taught me. Garlic, Italian parsley, Italian seasoning, the Italian sausage. Cook this for about 15 minutes. Some red wine. Yes. Salt, pepper, ground deli meats. We got everything in there, from pastrami to roast beef to salami. I, to... I smoke the corned beef here for our sandwiches, so. Of course you do. <laughs> tomato and tomato paste. And we'll let this cook down. Yes. And the last step of this is? Kale, basil, pesto. Parmesan cheese, garlic in there, salt. I'm going to buzz that off. Kale from my friend's farm and fresh basil. Now we're going to drizzle our olive oil in there. Are we ready to make this darn sandwich? We are. Let's do it. Just going to get some mayo on this nice rustic bread, just to kind of seal it so the meat sauce doesn't get through. Basil, kale, pesto. Gorgeous. Some meat sauce on there. This is meatloaf slash meatball sandwich. Well, it just makes my heart sing because my grandfather used to make this in the Italian deli. Here comes the meatloaf. I love how chunky and rustic it is. Mmm. Great texture. Caramelized onions. Got to go with a little of that, right? Why wouldn't you add 60 other things on your sandwich? <laughs> Vardy cheese. We're going to go grill it. That is one busy panini press. The kale, basil, pesto with the creamy Havarti and the caramelized onions, that is a meatball sandwich, and it is dynamite. One bite sings pesto, garden bright. And the other side sings old school, old world Italian meat sauce. And you get the two. Oh my gosh. 